Hello everybody, so today I'm gonna to try to give you as comprehensive a look at the fundamentals of CQB, uh, some of the ins and outs, some of the footwork, some of the uh, where, what you do and don't wanna do with your rifle or pistol uh, and body placement. Now I say try because there's just too much. Uh, there is no such thing as getting 100% on CQB, on clearing rooms, on things like that. There is no such thing as 100%. Uh, the minute you think you have it down, the minute that you believe that this is something you got licked, is the next corner you, you come across, you're gonna get shot in the face. Uh, it just, there's no way to train for every scenario. So you can only train uh, for what you know, be it a building or structure that you already have knowledge of, or the fundamentals, footwork, teamwork, things like that. Uh, those are the only ways to actually get ready for any kind of CQB work. Now, why am I doing this video? This video partly is in response to keyboard warriors out there, um, especially on places like TikTok, where, you, I mean, you just, you find the worst people on the planet. Uh, I put a couple videos out and uh, you get a string of, that's wrong, or you got killed, or all the other key keyboard commando, Call of Duty, video game guy, uh, bullshit that, uh, you know, they think that because they saw something from 20 feet away at a certain angle and things like that, that uh, because they saw it on a video somewhere else that was different, that it just, it's wrong. And uh, there's one thing that I don't tolerate on my channel, and that is people trying to get other people to not listen to valuable training uh, or valuable information. Uh, there are there are many, many ways to go through a building, go through a structure. There are many ways to take a corner. There are many ways to take a, a, a room depending on corner fed, center fed, uh, end of a hallway, uh, going into a hallway, going into you know, the front door of a building, there is an endless amount of different scenarios and uh, they all have a nuance to them. So for any one individual to go in and go, this is wrong, this way is wrong. There are wrong ways and that is every way. Something that people don't share about CQB is that every move you make is a potential wrong move. Um, and we can mitigate that by training, getting good information uh, and getting valuable training from people who know what they're talking about. Now there are plenty of people out there that think that because I have long hair or because I put on a few pounds over the last two two or three years that I don't know what I'm talking about. I must not know what I'm talking about. Uh, why I'm not sure but I must not know what I'm talking about because I'm not you know, be, be, because I'm not in the most fit shape and I don't have a buzz cut and the perfectly shaped beard um, and my name's not Mike Glover or Sean Ryan or, uh, you know, any of these other guys that, are, that have big names on YouTube who are special operations guys, Rangers, Green Berets, Two Lamb from Ronin, all these different guys who teach these things uh, that because my name isn't them or because I don't look like them, uh, that I must not know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to, uh, it's like 100 degrees out here. I'm going to try to break this down into uh, segments and I'm gonna put the timestamps down below uh, this will be the intro the next step next step next step that way if there's a particular part that you want to look at you can do that because this is going to be a long video so uh, I'm I'm not a John Lovell I'm not a Mike Glover Sean Ryan to lamb I, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm not sure that I'm actually pronouncing his name correctly uh, and not these guys, these, these special operations guys, rangers and green berets that uh, you see on YouTube. Although I was trained by guys like that. Uh, and I currently work 
I have worked with in the past, trained with in the past, and done this training to other people while these guys, these type of guys were around, and never once was I told that I'm doing it wrong. I currently work with uh, former 10th Mountain guys, and uh, again, I've worked with former Special Operations guys, Rangers, uh, Marines, and even uh, SWAT guys, and uh, we've trained this in and out together, and never once have I been told, no, you're an idiot, you don't know what you're talking about, or this is wrong. Um, I only seem to get that from faceless assholes on social media. Weird. So what's my qualifications? My qualifications are I started competition shooting in my early, early teens. So I started shooting when I was eight. Uh, by the time I was 11, 12, uh, 13, I was competition shooting, uh, doing what then was called like Hogan's Alley type shooting, which today would be more or less the IDPA, uh, ISPC, some of the run and gun type stuff. Uh, back then it wasn't called that. Uh, you know, back then there was the moving targets and the door that you had to kick down and barrels that you hid behind and things like that. And uh, it was on a it was on a range that at the time, I believe it was Columbus, Ohio SWAT used. Uh, so that was my upbringing. I was trained all the way back then and was taught how to do these things. Um, again, started competition shooting when I was in my teens. Uh, by the time I was 18, I went in the Navy. Of course, I didn't see combat in the Navy because, let's face it, there's not a whole lot of combat MOSs in the Navy. Uh, but it was uh, my entire adult life. I've been a student of the game, been trained by and trained with uh, guys from regular infantry all the way to, again, 10th Mountain guys, uh, former, uh, former SF guys, various special operations guys, and... Uh, have taken all that knowledge that I've gained and now put that to use with other people. For those of you who don't know, I currently work in high trafficking and cartel areas in the Southern Arizona desert where I regularly uh, employ these tactics when approaching uh, abandoned cartel houses, abandoned ranch houses, abandoned structures that are used by armed coyotes and possibly cartel guys. And of course, the former, the combat vets that I do work uh, in this area, work with in this area, have never once said, uh, yeah, we don't do it like that. We need to change the way we do this. So if that's not good enough for you, I, no hard feelings, press the exit button. Uh, give me a thumbs up while you're at it, if you like, uh, and see your way out of here. If that is enough to keep you around, uh, or if you understand that uh, training equals education, uh, training and consistent practice, as I've done in my life, does equal education and ability, then uh, stick around. You guys probably already know me. Some of you guys probably already know me. And I have a plethora of training videos that uh, I already have on YouTube. So let's first get out get out of the way. There's basically two ways to take a structure, a corner, a doorway, a room, a hallway, whatever. And that's going to be deliberately or dynamically. Uh, by the way, I'm going to be punching down a little bit in this video and you might see a little word bubble pop up from one of these uh, super operator guys on, uh, on uh, like TikTok or YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Uh, that has something has something to say about this and I'm going to address it and well show them the door too. So deliberately and dynamically. Deliberately is going to be a more more slow methodical way of doing it. Dynamically is going to be a faster way of doing it. This guy seems to think nobody does it dynamically anymore. Nobody enters a room uh, quickly anymore. And if you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, nobody enters rooms quickly anymore. So let's start, first talk about this corner here and talk about pieing. Now somebody asked, can you show us what we would see when pieing? 
And I don't know how I would do that. And I, of course, left my GoPro at home that I would normally clamp to my hat. Um, but I'm gonna take my camera and try to explain exactly what it is you would see from my point of view and then put you back on the tripod and what I am doing to see that. So as I'm traversing this wall, this could be a hallway, could be whatever, right? It's big enough that it could be a business conference center, a hotel room or a hotel hallway, uh, a school hallway, something like that. It could even be uh, a sidewalk going into an alleyway, but uh, this isn't something that you may, you probably wouldn't see this as often in a house. So I am heading this direction. I see I have an entryway. My pieing starts now. You can see here, I can see that corner. And so as I approach, I'm gonna try to sort of use my finger as the muzzle. As I approach and I start moving around this corner, you can see that there's slice by slice, little by little, little by little, I'm taking in the information about what's in that room. And there's a point at this, at this wall, there's a point, there's an imaginary line here that you don't want to cross unless you're ready to commit to it because that's going to be where the bad guy is, right? So you've, you've searched or cleared whatever term you want to use. You've searched or cleared here, 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 here. You get to a point where if you cross this barrier, if you cross this imaginary line, that you're going to expose yourself. So you cannot keep going and keep going slowly because you're, you're just taking this area far too slowly. There's got to be a point in time that you decide to commit to that spot right there. This is where the, if you know, you know guy <laughs> said, well, why don't you just take, you know, slowly pie this corner the whole way around? Well, because you end up exposing yourself, that's why. Um, we will get into sweeping a doorway shortly, and that would be the only other way I would, I would teach it. Um, and I'll show you what that is. But for the sake of what we just talked about, what I just showed you on the camera, is as I'm coming in, first you don't want to be completely up against the wall. Bullets can travel walls. You want to be a few inches to a foot off the wall. When you have your rifle or pistol, right? You have your rifle or you have your pistol, right? It's going to be just down below your eye level. It can be down here. Some people come down here. Since we're using the rifle right now, some people will come all the way down here. Some people will be here as they're approaching. I like to be just under eye level, right? I'm looking right over my optic. That way it's a very short, up if I even have to go up to engage. So I am doing that very same thing. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I'm doing this little by little. This is more of a deliberate pieing of the corner. If I was doing this a little bit more dynamically, I would do it more fluidly and I would probably just walk it until I had to enter the room, until I got to the point where I had to enter the room. We're going to talk about footwork here in a minute. This is just about your firearm. So this is where we began with the camera. I can see that little corner there, little by little by little by little by little by little. Now I am to a point now where I'm going to have to cross this boundary. I'm going to have to cross this imaginary line. And this is where footwork comes in. Again, if I try to, I can lean a little bit, place myself to lean out, place myself to lean out, but you do still expose yourself once you cross. This is a hard line. This is not something that, this is not something that uh, is malleable. This is a hard line. So once your muzzle and at least this much of your head crosses that line, understand that much of you is exposed. And if you have somebody waiting, as most people believe they do, 
if you have somebody waiting for you, then as you start creeping around there, they're gonna know you're there. With that said, you might get lucky, you might get into a situation where you pop around the corner and they're not looking. You pop around the corner, it might be, it might be empty. It might be a couple of guys facing the wrong, different direction. It might be a million things. And this is why not one way is the right way. There are multiple ways to do this. So that is the basics of pieing. You take slices of that pie, little by little, by little by little, could be bigger steps. It just depends on how you, how you need to do it in that particular situation. But little by little by little, you're absorbing that information. You're taking that information and acting upon it. This is actually part of your OODA loop. If you don't know what that is, I suggest looking that up. There's a bunch of guys out there that, that talk about it. So if you noticed, I had a particular body positioning. I was, I was away from the wall. I was doing certain things with my, with my rifle as I approached this. So again, as I approach this, I am going to make sure that the muzzle of my gun does not protrude beyond that corner. And I'll move the camera and show you why. So if you do not keep an awareness of where your muzzle is, to where this imaginary line is, to where this break in the corner is, to where whatever you want to call it, this corner, it could be a 45, it could be a 90, it just depends on how you're, the dimension of this room, how big the doorway is, how far apart this, this entrance area is. Like I said, this is more of an open corner like you would see in a conference center or a hotel or something like that where there's not really a wall here, this isn't really a doorway, it's just a 90 degree turn. Anyway, so if you do not keep awareness of where your muzzle is, as you poke your muzzle out, which you can, I would imagine, be able to see my muzzle right now, and you've given away your position. As you poke your muzzle out, which you can, I would imagine, be able to see my muzzle right now. And you've given away your position by doing so. However, keeping your muzzle back, and right about now, I can see the camera tripod. Right about now I can see the camera tripod. And so I have the choice of dipping in, dipping in, and engaging that way, or quickly engaging. So now if you're doing this quickly, even if you're doing it slowly, if you're doing this either both uh, deliberately or dynamically, as you approach, if you want to get really close to this, corner, you can come up over the shoulder and take the corner in that fashion uh, or like I just showed you, if you're coming through, coming through, pieing, you see the peak of someone and enter. Now if you're doing this in a stack, if you're doing this with multiple people, there's a high probability that you're not going to approach the door like this. You're going to, as you, as you approach this doorway or this corner, to retract your firearm. The guy behind you is going to give you a tap, squeeze, bump, rub, blow in your neck, whatever the hell he's going to do, and that's letting you know that he's ready. At that point, boom, and you really come crashing through that door. We're going to get more into that part later. Now footwork is where a lot of people got bent on my little TikTok video because as I was coming around the corner, my feet, my foot positioning was this. Now if you draw a line, if you draw a line here, I can see beyond that corner, right? If he, straight through, I can see beyond that corner, you can't see my feet. You can't see my feet, you can't see my back foot, and I will repeat, you cannot see my back foot. Anything from here this way, I've already looked at. I've already cleared or searched or however language you want to use. 
I have already cleared from here to here. So anybody that's gonna see my foot or body positioning from there is probably already dead. And uh, I've already decided once I've engaged somebody here to dynamically take the rest of the room because once you start firing shots, you're not gonna be quiet anymore. As I am, I do this because as I'm approaching the corner, I want to be able to step out and around the corner when taking that room, when taking that threshold, when taking that doorway. Um, because stepping out too far like this means you've exposed yourself and have to twist in order to get a muzzle in there. You're exposing your side, there's less body armor there, if any, right? And then you twist and square yourself up. And equally, if you're too far back, and even if you take the step, boom, how many people, especially you guys out there who, who've trained in this, how many guys do you know, whop, and put their muzzle right into the door jam on either side? That's what ends up happening. So as I always teach, as you're approaching this, get your footwork in order so you can step, not break that line, but cross quickly and come through. Now that can be when coming into the room as well. It doesn't have to be on this corner. For instance, this would be a corner fed room. The room goes that way and the wall continues down here. We are going to, this is not a protrusion. This is not uh, something you have to look behind. Although when I teach people down in this area, we do use this as like a bookshelf that you do have to look behind. But for the sake of this video, this is gonna be a flat wall. So, I have enough room here to, right? And I'm to the point where I'm going to have to break this threshold, where I'm going to have to step into the room somehow. And this is where, if your foot placement is like this, you're gonna step in and be sideways, no good. If you're too far back, you're gonna step in and then have to step around this corner or make sure somewhere back in here, you get your footwork in order. You've been walking your whole life. You know what your steps are like. Get your footwork in order and step in and take that, take that, uh, take that wall over to your point of dominance. Uh, to your sector and then you can take this wall point into the center point into the room wherever else wherever it is that you have to turn your aggression now the people online that just couldn't handle that I was approaching this corner like this even though I've already shown you with the dirt line that I am well within well behind the view of this corner the people that couldn't handle that suggest that you approach like this. This is something that Ronan Tactics, the two lamb, uh, the way he teaches things. Of course, it's the caveat of a narrow hallway, which this is not. And I'll actually roll that clip right now. All right, so on an approach to a 90, if I overexpose my weapon, overexpose a body part, then I'm breaking that 90 uh, degree rule. So you have to take the, the 90 degree rule uh, dynamically or deliberately. Dynamically taking a 90 degree angle, uh, you're kind of coming in blind, right? You're trying to figure out uh, the room. You're trying to figure out the obstacle as you're taking that room. Deliberate, um, you're, you're kind of pieing off that room, right? You're pieing off the room prior to entering the room. So you want to pie off as much as room prior to entering it and just clear what needs to be clear. And then you have a 45 degree angle on the doorway. So if you're approaching like an open door, you're going to have a 45 degree angle that you have to worry about. So a lot of times when we're trained CQB, a lot of these uh, narrow hallways, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to overexpose basically our foot, kind of overexpose um, our legs, right? So it's all about the angle games when we're talking about close quarters combat. Approaching, if I go center line on a hallway, Start approaching, see how I broke 
the 45 degree angle. He has a shot on me right now and I do not see him. So what I'm gonna to do to switch is, I'm gonna switch my base to my right foot now. So my right foot is usually back. You're gonna start seeing me switch my base. As I clear, you're gonna start seeing the footwork, right? You're gonna start seeing the footwork and I'm gonna start slowly pying. I already see him on, on, on threat. So Jeff, do you have me? See muzzle. Right, the only thing he sees is muzzle, right? He does not see my exposure. And when, when the muzzle exposed to the threat, well, it's too late for him. So he talks about the 90 degree plane, right? In which when approaching the 90 degree plane, I don't know if you could tell with his footwork, but he approaches it exactly the way I am uh, on this video. And it's not until a 45 or 30 or whatever the degree plane is that you're, that you're working with in a narrower hallway, does he really start talking about having your right foot, in this case, right foot forward and being like this. Now, is that ineffective? Of course, it's not ineffective. It's one of many ways to do it. I find it harder to then spring on this door, to then dynamically take this hallway, room, doorway, threshold, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I find it harder to if I have to take this, this wall to jump out and then take this, this, uh, this wall, this corridor, I find it harder to go from here to here than from here to here. Does that make one way wrong? No, of course it does not make one way wrong. And does that make the other way the only right way? Of course it does not make the other way the only right way. Uh, this is the point of getting training from multiple people, multiple sources to have multiple different experiences. Now the last part about footwork, we've talked about, we've talked about getting your footwork ready. Here and in, two steps. Two steps, you'll hear multiple uh, instructors talk about two steps, that, that this is one, two, now even if you're coming straight from the side and you got a stack with you, right, and you're like this, it's no different, it's one, two, and to end footwork, we're going to talk about walking. Now you may see people doing this like crouched, shorter paced walking. Uh, I highly suggest that. Number one, it keeps your, everybody has a bounce. When they walk straight up, right? When you're walking down the sidewalk, you have a bounce. Everybody does. And you want to mitigate that bounce as best as possible. And that is part of what people are doing when they crouch and start doing this heel to toe, heel to toe. almost like they're walking on a line, almost like they're walking on a straight line, heel to toe, short steps, because it keeps you, it helps to mitigate your bouncing. Why do we want to mitigate our bouncing? Why do we want to lessen our bouncing? Because if it's time to engage somebody, you don't want to be all over the place, especially if you're moving and shooting at the same time. Now what I'm gonna play for you real quick, and I hope these guys don't get mad at me, uh, what I'm gonna play for you real quick is a bunch of little snippets of videos that I found after people, after the internet operators started going after me uh, online. Some snippets of guys like John Lovell, uh, Sean Ryan, uh, and even Mike Glover, that they use very similar footwork, very similar tactics when they're teaching things. And this is, and each person is doing it a little different. Uh, in this, Sean Ryan is uh, cross clearing, which we'll talk about in a little bit, but is cross clearing, but he's using the same footwork, the one, two, the step out and through. Uh, in Mike Glover's video, he is using basically, and he's got a pistol, but he is using something similar to this, stepping out and clearing. He does it not, in, not only in a doorway, but in a closet. 
in the Tactical Rifleman video, you'll see it, uh, is a former SEAL, where he actually takes the corner fed room exactly the way I teach it to people, and I didn't even know that video existed. And then in the John Level video, I don't. This may not be in, in in order that I that I post them on here, but in the John Level video, he goes presumably through a front door, uh, and then takes a left doorway of a center fed room immediately. But in doing so, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, uh, in doing so, he does that same step out, step in, two step process that I'm talking about. So enjoy these little clips. I open the door, swing it open, oh shit, all right. I, you know what I mean? You know this is clear, right? So, you're like, oh fuck. Same steps though, right? Or two steps. I what I see again, which is, I can see 99, 95% of the room, which corner fed room, so I see a, a wall. I'm looking down here, I know there's a cut. Well now I can commit to the same thing, Stepping and then pying off. Look, pying, pying is not segmenting, um, segmenting the room in stages because you could flow through a pie state. Is that even a thing? That should be a book. Flowing through the pie state with Mike Glover, CQB tactics, the CQB salsa book. Um, as I'm coming here, I don't have to go clear, clear, clear. I see it's clear because my barrel's in it. I'm not overextended and then I'm coming here to the cut and clearing the cut by stepping and committing my barrel to address the immediate threat if it exists. Same thing, this, this uh, closet's closed. I'm here, I'm gonna quietly open this up and push and then see what I can see, which is it's clear, and then clean the cut and then step out of the room. Watching that corner as I'm coming around nice and slow. I'm making sure I don't step real far and protrude my foot around that corner. I'm cheating the gun to the right side of my body. All right. And now I've cleared the majority of the room. And I'm, I wasn't really on balance. The trick to the economy of motion is thinking just a sliver of time before I step into that, that sector, do I want to take a smaller step or a larger step to where when I turn the corner, I'll be on perfect balance to take a shot if I need to at a threat. So what does that look like? Now, I'm back here. I come up as a number one man. I see that my number one sector is clear. I haven't quite broken the corner yet, but I see that that's the way I want to go in this particular corner fed scenario. Now, instead of short stepping, and then turning into the corner and not being able to clear this corner, I'm gonna take that extra pause to step a little bit further out. And as I rotate the corner, I'm on perfect balance as I come in and address the threat. So we're gonna talk about cross clearing. Uh, this is still gonna be a corner fed room to my left, but there is a significantly longer wall but there is a significantly longer wall uh, across from me. Now, if you recall when I had the camera pointed for pieing, as I approached this, I can see that wall, but I can't see that corner. Now this leaves you a couple things you can do. You can get up to the point where you have to cross this line and either come in like this like this and like this. Or come in and boom, two steps. And then once you're in, you turn your attention down, down. And then once you're in, you turn your attention down range, down, you know, down the hallway, down the, into, the, into the back of the room, whatever you're in. So I'm going to show you what both ways look like from inside the room or inside the hallway. I come up, I come up, I've looked as much as I can in through here and I can see to about here. 
which leaves plenty of room for a body. But of course, there's plenty of room this way for a body. So I come up and I decide, I decide that I've seen enough of this corner to feel comfortable turning this corner, quickly engaging anything or at least clearing that sector and then turning my attention this way because that slice pie is so small that I, I'm comfortable that there's nobody there. So I've looked at, at that corner as much as I can. And pie, 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 pie. Enter and take this corner and then I'll turn my attention this way. Or I decide that I need to get across here and then turn my attention this way. So with this, I'm not going to pie at all. I'm going to basically come straight through. I'm at the corner, right here. I'm at the corner, and I decide I'm going to cross clear, step, step, in, and engage. That's essentially the two ways that you may commonly find yourself doing something like this. So I mentioned sweeping a doorway. I mentioned sweeping a doorway. This is something that is done quickly. This is not something you're going to do deliberately or slowly. This is something you're going to do dynamically and fast. And essentially from where you're at, what you're going to see is this. I get to the corner and quickly visually clear this area. Now I have the choice of making a U-turn to come back around here. I have the choice of coming into here, turning my attention to there, then coming this way. Or coming straight in, turning my attention to there, and then rotating back around and walking this wall. Now from this angle, this is what you're probably gonna see. You're gonna see the approach. I've visually inspected as much of that area as I possibly can. It's shallow enough that I feel comfortable crossing the doorway. I don't want to quite enter the room yet, so I'm going to quickly sweep the doorway. Given furniture, given engagements, given whatever, given your team, if you have a team with you, uh, you may go, you know, you may sweep across, go straight in, or you could be here, one of your battle buddies there, and he cross clears, and as soon as you, he does that, you can come in this way. There's just a bunch of different scenarios for that. Now, in a center fed room, you have much of the same options. You can either cross clear or turn the corner, um, and then turn and get the corner that you didn't, that you didn't see when you entered. All the footwork's gonna be very much the same. Uh, and uh, of course, your muzzle discipline and things like that don't change. So I hope that helps people with close quarters stuff. A lot of general basics uh, to a little bit more advanced, but uh, if you practice things in this fashion, and uh, there's other ways to do it, of course, um, you will be much farther ahead than your average dude. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like, share, and subscribe. We'll talk to you later.